fun. Yay. Hey everybody, it's Laura Kingen. Ready for another live demo. It is Wednesday. My apologies, it's a little late. I um, want to talk about uh, uh, needs and values and review our exercise program from actually two weeks ago. Um, but I need sleep and I didn't get enough, so we'll see how well I can do this. But I am a registered, I'm actually a nationally registered occupational therapist. I am also licensed by the state of Arizona to practice occupational therapy. Um, what I realized uh, back, uh, actually in the spring, summer, June, July, um, that this is something that I can offer to you all um, during this really hard year, moving into 2021, the second year. Um, well, we're about a, a good year into all this. So I wanna, um, offer some things to you. You can tell I'm tired. <laughs> um, about our mental health and our behavioral health and our coping skills, about how to be able to cope with a really tough time. So clearly, you know, I have strategies, um, strategies that I can offer, strategies that I actually utilize, strategies that I should utilize. Um, so I'd like to share all that with you today, or share some of those things with you today. Um, I'm located in Flagstaff, Arizona. Um, one of the things that's really important to me is the snow um, and nature. And so I do have two pads go two iPads going, and I'm hoping you can get um, a sense of the blue sky and the snow and the trees. Um, so hopefully the sunlight is um, not quite as reflective as some of these other videos. Um, so I hope you all can enjoy this um, part of nature. Um, I am gonna go through this first part of um, this demo and just do more administrative business kinds of things, explain what I'm trying to do, why I'm doing it. And then um, I'm gonna do some more talking today as part of this demo um, and present some different theories and, and concepts and then we'll move into the, the activity portion, or, um, or somebody recently said it's like lab. So we'll do classroom first, and then we'll do the lab, and then we'll finish up with like a quiet time. And we'll see how long this will take us. Um, <clears throat> so if you want, you can fast forward into uh, the more activity portion. Um, but let me cover a few things. Um, part of the reason why I'm doing this is as an offering to you all. Um, this is something that it's something that I've been working on throughout my whole life, my whole adult life, my career. Um, as an occupational therapist, I've worked in behavioral health for um, many years at St. Luke's Behavioral Health um, Hospital in Phoenix. Um, I've also worked with a lot of foster and adoptive kids, and, and there's a lot of behavioral health um, with that, especially with autism. Um, so I have some things that I can share with you all. Um, I... Uh, I've been wanting to do some online events um, that's paid events. Um, I, it's just next on the table. Um, so you can look for those. The stress has just been really high this month um, with the inauguration and everything that's going on. And um, so I've just been waiting for the right time. So please look for that. Um, but also I do individual and group treatments. Um, We'll do an exercise program today, a review that we did a couple of weeks ago. And that's one of the things that I may do in some of my sessions is offer um, an individualized exercise program for my client that we would do time and time again. Um, that's one of the support services that I can provide to my clients. Um, so you get a taste of that. That's another reason why I'm doing these is so you can get a sense of who I am um, and how I work. Um, so that you can kind of meet me. Um, the major contact for me is on Facebook um, at SSIFB. I know this is going to be backwards. Let's see if I get, I'm going to switch this around. Oops. You can all just bear with me. There's my business card. My business is Sensory Solutions Inc. You can reach me on my cell at area code 631 848. 8852. Switch this around here. Oops. There we go. 
My tagline is offering strategies to reach wholeness. Now, as an OT, I definitely have a lot of strategies um, in my uh, therapy bag, so to speak. Doesn't necessarily mean that I utilize all of them. It, I'm, a work in, I'm a work in progress. So I think that's about it that I really wanted to cover as far as administrative kinds of things. Um, uh, I guess uh, one other thing, I guess YouTube. Um, if you would please subscribe um, to uh, my channel on, on YouTube. It is at SSI Tube. So it's Sensory Solutions Inc. Tube, like it's YouTube. Um, I, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at uh, going over to Patron and trying to get Patron, or Patreon. <laughs> Patreon, I always mix that up. Um, for donations, uh, to uh, see about getting online donations. So those are some of the things that I'm, I'm looking at doing. I've been hoping to do that with YouTube too but it's been hard getting subscribers and kind of where are we going you know we're kind of all in a waiting zone and and rest is has been important and even with all the stress it's been hard to rest too so um so i think that that's the bulk of what i wanted to say about that let's get into more of the conceptual um issues of what i wanted to talk about the title of this is um, values needs and gut exercise so i want to cover um uh, needs first of all and one of the structures that we um, uh, refer to when we talk about needs are the Maslow's hierarchy of needs um, I'm gonna kind of switch around here what kind of I'm going to switch around so there's gonna be some adjustments as I do this but I want you all to be able to see my computer oops And I've got the um, Facebook page, my Facebook page. I have talked about get, working with a sound engineer and I am still planning on doing that. Um, that's the problem. Um, It's the logistics of all this. Nope, I don't want to do this. I'm sorry, guys. It's all going to be backwards. Um, sorry about all this. Still working on the logistics. Um, I am looking at a sound engineer to come and join me. Um, but, you know, monetary issues right now is, is part of the problem. And we're still kind of in a, a waiting zone. Um, I would like to do more professional videos, um, especially some short ones for kids and whatnot to actively do. But... This is the best I can do for right now. Um, so I want to show you this this Facebook page, um, and you know the this is actually an event uh, announcement, and on there you can see these two tabs. The about um, talks about the, um, what this actually this event actually is, but up here is discussion. And in there, I have several different um, uh, resources for you all to review related to this topic. So what I've done is I'm going to jump ahead and I've already pulled these different pages. It's just, I think, easier for me for purposes of this demo to um, just cut to the tabs here. Some of you have probably seen this before, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And I think it's actually particularly pertinent today, in today's day, with this whole pandemic and looking at what our needs are. And sit here better. Um, because I think that the pandemic has really challenged what our needs are. For example, in this pyramid here, at the bottom of the pyramid, one of the most important things um, for needs for us human beings are physical needs. Things like clean water, good food, rest. <laughs> I know that one. Um, and like if those issues are not met, how can we function elsewhere? Um, 
And I think so much of, of it is our basic drive for the, getting satiating our, our physiological needs. And then taking it to the next step includes safety, that there needs to be a safety issue as well. And so with this pandemic, you can see how a lot of our physical needs um, are being challenged. A lot of us, you know, uh, a lot of people are unemployed. Where are people getting money? You know, $600 relief check went real quick, you know, after months and months. Um, a lot of people are really suffering with that right now. And then there's been that thread about like rent, um, evictions and all. Where does that go with our needs for safety? Taking a, a next step up, what about our sense, uh, our need for belonging? Um, that we all do have a sense of belonging. We were all um, theoretically born in a family, um, but those people, like I alluded to earlier, I've worked with a lot of foster children. Um, what about their sense of belonging? And if that sense, that sense of belonging is, is interrupted, um, it will probably, it more than likely affect these higher levels or, or um, more refined levels. Um, in this category of belonging is also feeling loved, that we all have needs for feeling loved, feeling connected with one another. And the idea is that when these basic needs, our physical needs, our safety needs, our sense of belonging, we're feeling loved, that we can develop a sense of esteem about ourselves. We can feel a sense of accomplishment, a sense of independence, um, a sense of self. And then taking that a step further up to the self-actualization of feeling so good about yourself that you can have compassion for others and be able to offer something of yourself on the benefit of others um, in a self-actualized kind of a way. Um, so I think that this is a good framework of which to think about our basic needs. Um, and I think that's about all I really want to say about that. Um, but I want to jump over to values. <clears throat> Um, because I think we're in a time now where we, dare I use the word morals, morals and values, are being questioned. Um, and so I want to talk about that. I want to talk just about some values. Um, you know, I looked online, you know, like, what is morals? What are values? The word virtue came up, but what does that mean? Um, and so some of the different, what I was kind of getting from it is just like personal wants and beliefs. Where, like values is personal wants and beliefs, where morals is a more societal based. Um, moral is Latin for manners or character standards of behavior, right choices. Um, but what does that mean? Um, because I think, you know, different, there's different people and different cultures, different perspectives. Um, what is that sense of right and wrong? And if one person's sense of right, is that another person's sense of wrong? Or is there a more universal, universality sense of what values and morals are, what right behavior is? For example, dare I broach this? There's children in cages at our border that our leaders in our country, our government, has designated as important for our country. And I got a problem with that. And I know other people do. How do we resolve that? Where some people feel like that's okay and others don't. And rather than me coming up with an answer, I'm just posing that as we're in a, it's a conundrum. How do we resolve that? Um, and then let's take it a step further. What is immoral behavior? If we have moral behavior as what is right, then what is wrong? And is that a judgment? Is that, is that even fair? But um, 
I think as a whole, at least how I was raised, we were taught that things like lying and cheating and stealing are wrong. So I want to just pose this kind of like for us to think about some of these things. What do we value? Do we value? Do we? I, I mean, it gets into some political issues too. And I mean, I, I don't want to go right or wrong here. I just want to pose this and be kind of provocative about thinking about what what are your values about some things. And and I'll elaborate on this um, as part of this presentation. Um, a couple other things: adultery and greed. Um, Hoarding, you know, is that right behavior? Are these things that we want to value? Do we value greed and adultery? Um, and how do we how do we address that? So, one of the things I wanted to point out here on this computer is Benjamin Franklin. He feels that everyone should possess these thirteen virtues, and I'm just going to run through a couple of these different things um, to give you some things to think about. Temperance, silence, order, resolution, frugality, industry, sincerity, justice, and he goes on, moderation and cleanliness, tranquility and chastity, humility, um, Oh, I didn't pull this web page up. Um, there was another web page I found, Aristotle's 12 Virtues. And some of those um, items are courage and bravery. Again, temperance or moderation. Magnificence or style. Generosity, ambition, patience, friendliness, truth, wit, modesty. Another site that I found um, is pricelessparenting.com. And I thought there were some interesting things in here. Now, I mean, I want to be careful with the whole spirituality piece because, again, there's, there's differences in people. But most people have some kind of spiritual or religious practice. And as an occupational therapist, I need to um, honor whomever comes to me as a patient to order, in order to treat them. So I was raised in a more Christian-oriented environment, but as an adult, I've, I've broadened out and studied Native American um, traditions. I've studied with Tibetans, and that uh, even hin hin Hindu practices has influenced um, who I am and, and how I function. But I guess the point is, I, that I'm trying to make is, I feel like as an occupational therapist, I need to have versatility <clears throat> in my perspective. And one of those is about spirituality. And so it's such a delicate topic, but I, I am gonna broach it because that's what I need to do. If I'm gonna treat somebody, a whole, somebody as a whole person, if spirituality is important to them, then that's something that I need to address. And if it's not, then I don't. It's less, it's really not about me, it's about my client. And so I think it's important to recognize that spirituality is a part of who we are as our needs for most of us. Um, but one of the things about this particular site with this priceless parenting is it kind of takes a little bit of the religiosity or spirituality um, and talks a little more like in a secular manner as far as like acceptance and compassion, cooperation and courage, equality, fairness, generosity. But you can see how so much of these are the overtones in these other areas. Um, those people who are religious, there's the Beatitudes in the Bible. Um, there's the Psalms. There's lots of guiding principles that humans have utilized to help guide their values and their moral development.
And I think we're at a time now culturally, societally, whatever, where these kinds of things are being uh, on the table again. So, um, I'm going to take this a step further, dare I say. Somebody recently recommended a movie, it's like a seven, ten minute movie on YouTube called Night in the Garden. And it's about the Nazi party, uh, real footage of the Nazi Nazis in Madison Square Garden in, I think it was 1939. Now my father was a baby, he was, he was born in 1938, but in Queens, it's right near there. Um, I wonder how much my family, what was it, influenced by that or not. I, they're not here anymore, so I can't ask them. But what stood out about that in that movie is they did the Pledge of Allegiance. I want to start to cry. And as they said the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm so glad I caught it. They took out under God. And that's really striking for me. Because I think that that is so much of why we do as human beings have some kind of spiritual practice is to help guide our moral behavior and how we treat one another, how we treat ourselves. And over time, you know, I mean, the Bible itself is 2,000 years old, but, you know, the Tibetans, their practice is 18,000 years ago. Now, some people might argue that point, but there's some wisdom there. So I want to mention that. Um, because these are delicate topics. And I want to take it even farther. What happened when we display immoral behavior? You know, I'm a practicing Catholic. Confession is really very powerful. It's such a powerful tool for some soul searching and acknowledging when we do something that we feel I mean, how many times I know I shouldn't do this, but you do it anyway. You have the Ten Commandments, you know? Like, what if you stole something or you did something? Something's just egging you on to go and do something, consciously or otherwise. You know, confession is one way that we have to try to find some way to find resolve within ourselves about this. The Native Americans talk about the Hayoka. Now, how many of you all have ever heard this or understand the concept of the Hayoka? But it's fascinating and it's incredibly important and powerful. The Hayoka is a sacred clown, plays the role in the community to teach the wrong way of doing things. Let me, let me rephrase that. The Hayoka goes about and does everything wrong. And the reason why they're going about doing it, they're clowning around and they're doing everything wrong to teach the community the right way of doing things. And I'm sorry, this is my opinion, but I think that there's a lot of Hayoka kind of energy going on right now to teach us and to show us what is the right way of doing things. that there are two sides to things. And somehow we need to find that full circle. We need to know who we are and what we're not and find that place in between where there can be some truth, if that makes any sense. It's a really powerful teaching. If it's no fault. Um, because another concept that I want to talk about is grace and forgiveness. And how does that play a role? And that in spiritual practices, we, we do actively talk about forgiveness and grace. And what happens when somebody does do something that is considered wrong or they mess up for We all do it. I, I heard a priest in a, in a mass one time. He said, we are all sinners. And I was just like, here's this priest saying that. That he acknowledged that he's a sinner. And I heard that the... I don't know if it was this Pope, but one of the Popes was going to confession every day. I mean, if the Pope can go to, needs to go to confession every day, what about the rest of us? Is there any hope for the rest of us kind of a thing? Well, yes. 
and to me, it's I value this whole topic, and that's why I'm bringing it up. And I think it's important to contemplate these kinds of things. It's important for me as an occupation, as an occupation therapist, to contemplate these things because I do deal with behavior. And just because somebody acts out, does that mean that they're bad? I mean, I think we're all worthy. I think we all sometimes act badly. I know, you know, there's times where I'm not real happy with my own self. Um, okay, so anyway, I figured I'd probably belabor these points a bit, a bit much, but um, you know, I, I'm not familiar with Islam. But I was like, you know, just kind of curious. What about the morality in Islam for people who are Islamic? I know very little about... Um, pe it's not, this is not really off my tongue. I, I really don't know that many people who are Islamic. But because they're Islam, does that mean that they're bad? Or is there some redeeming qualities? I mean, I don't know. So I looked on the Wiki Wikipedia, right? So what do they have? Major virtues. Charity and philanthropy, forgiveness, tolerance, honesty, kindness, and leniency, on and on. I mean, I think we all have a, a central theme of what moral behavior is. And what, how do we value that? I want to kind of segue and take it to a, a different step here. And I know I'm taking a lot of time. This is going to be a long demo. But interest. What are your interests? Um, I've alluded before about the medicine wheel. And it's interesting. I went online and the NIH.gov actually talks about um, medicine ways, traditional, heal, traditional healers and healing very briefly, but it does talk about the medicine wheel. So even the NIH is talking about that. I mean, I live in Northern Arizona. I've worked on um, the Navajo Reservation. I have some very dear friends, some of you that may even be watching this, who are Native American. You know, how much you understand the Native, me Native Medicine Wheel teaching, but it's, a, it's an important framework of which I'd like to talk a little more about. When we're talking about needs, um, what are our emotional needs? What are our physical needs? What are our mental needs and what are our spiritual needs or our social needs, our needs for connection? I mean, I kind of look at that one quarter part as, or let me rephrase that. I look at kind of like those three quarter parts as like who I am and me, and then that one quarter part as far as me in relation to the other. Um, I want to talk just about our interests in these different areas. Um, and give you just some activity ideas um, as far as giving you some things to think about with regards to what do you value, what are your needs, what are you interested in. We talk about Maslow's, those are some Maslow's hierarchy, those are some basic needs, but I think what makes us um, more unique as an individual are our interests, our unique interests. Um, and I, I wanted to put uh, just couple of reasons why we have interests and the value of interest is um, first of all it makes us interesting it's stimulating and it gives us quality of life it helps us to connect with others it helps us to have homeostasis and be able to interact in the world um, like into work and our interests even can help calm us down and impact our parasympathetic nervous system. So um, mentally, what are uh, some of our interests and our needs? Um, why do we even have the mental functioning? Well, it stimulates our brain. It helps us to plan and organize. It helps us to implement um, our day-to-day -day functioning. It helps keep us safe. What are some of the things that you can do to help stimulate your uh, mental functioning? Things like puzzles. I've been doing puzzles lately. I mentioned that a couple weeks ago, actually. Reading, journaling. Um, 
as an occupational therapist, one of the things we love to do are crafts. It's a lot of mental um, stimulation and crafts. And then emotionally, um, things like family and friends, even our pets, um, there's an emotional piece. And I know that that includes other um, as well, but we do, we, we have an innate emotional response when we're around others. But even like arts and music, poetry, language, uh, reading can um, stimulate emotional responses. Um, and so some activities that you can do that are emotional activities, play with an animal, uh, watch a movie, read a book, do art, listen to music. Um, even doing like scrapbooks. Um, one of the things I've done is genealogy. There is definitely an emotional component that comes up with that. Um, spiritual, I'm going to do the physical last. The spiritual, um, like I said, is like, is about connecting with others, but it's also about, um, forces beyond our control. Um, having a connection with the unknown. Some people are more spiritual in nature than others. Um, but what I'm putting in the spiritual category is also like culture and tradition. Um, being civic uh, minded, civic responsibility, charity and religion. Um, you know, going to church is a way to tap into spirituality. Tapping into other cultures can help us um, uh, tap into interests and increase our interests. Um, and again, arts, music, poetry, engaging in those kinds of areas can help us learn about ourselves and um, live a more fuller life. As far as traditions, things like cooking and lifestyle, I think of clothing, um, culture activities, one's home, um, and again, civic, civic mindedness, there may be family traditions that one follows. Um, and then the physical is being able to move your body, being it, which then helps you be able to function in, in the day to day world. Um, physical interests, uh, uh, physicality is part of transportation and is, and is transporting us from one place to another. Um, the, our physical needs and interests impact the health of our culture and again safety and so some of the ways that we can tap into our physical needs would be obviously exercise communicating walking um, uh, and then even the transportation so um, I know I'm really this is I'm kind of rushing now because this is really a lot of information I knew it would be but it's a really important topic for today. And um, so I want you all to just think about these things. Think about your values. What do you value? What do you value in these different categories? Your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual values. How has that shifted during this pandemic? Um, and here's my kind of marketing plug. I mean, that's part of you know why I'm here as an occupational therapist is um, to be able to help, you know, give some guidance if you guys um, need some extra guidance along the way. Um, so having said that, I want to segue in because last week we did talk about routines and exercise. Um, I want to do, revisit this exercise program and then we'll, I'll do a little, I want to do a little chanting of these couple ohms at the end for a quiet time because I want to show you some different strategies and techniques for calming. Um, so each presentation, I'm going to do something different. So I thought with this one, because it is about um, needs and values, you know, I value different cultures. Um, and there's some of you that may know nothing about owning. So I thought we would do that. So let's visit, revisit this exercise program, and then we'll own and we'll wrap it up. Um, I, I've gone ahead and um, set, uh, made an event for next week, and that's self-care for loneliness. Because I think there's a lot of people that are home alone. I'm very fortunate. I, you know, I was 
I was single for many years, so I understand loneliness. Um, and I'm very fortunate now that, that my husband is here and he's supporting me. Um, but um, there's some um, strategies that we can talk about for next week um, to help you all address some of these loneliness issues. Family, Francis, thank you. <laughs> it means a lot to me. Um, anyway, so let's go ahead and let's move into um, this exercise routine. I'm going to do my best to talk as little as possible and we'll just run through the exercise routine. It shouldn't even take 10 minutes or about 10 minutes. Um, my husband, Kevin Kingen, is going to be helping out. He's going to be giving some musical accompaniment for this. Um, he spent about 50 years, uh, well, he's been a musician all his life. I'll just leave it at that. Um, and so we've been able to come together and offer this to you. And um, in this exercise routine, I'm hoping that you all have an idea of ways to grade it. For any, for, we're all individual. Um, and so you can do this to your own skills and abilities. If you would like some guidance, you can contact me. Uh, we can work together. Um, so I'm not gonna be like, do this thing five times every day. Um, I am giving you some suggestions and every day it's an individual thing. Make it your own. Um, just have some fun with it and let's go. Okay, so I'm gonna situate things a little differently here. Oops, that was the ball, that was not me. <laughs> So if you can just bear with me all, let me just get this situated. Okay. This is about the best I think I can do. Um, <clears throat> On YouTube and I will on this Facebook page um, will write down what these different uh, exercises are so the first thing is go ahead and I apologize you can't see my feet oh logistics just some things I am picky about some things not so much Plant your feet. That'll help with the grounding. Kind of really wiggle the feet down. Wiggle my shoulders. Take a deep breath in and out. Namaste. From my heart to yours. So. Make sure you have enough room. Let's just do some gentle arm circles. I'm oh, sorry, arm swing. Now, you can be a little creative with this. Work down your body a little bit. Kind of wake up your body. Give your body some tactile input. Be gentle. Let's do some duck wings or arm circles if you like. And I'm going to coordinate my breathing with them. I'm going to stand a little bit more like this so you can see me better. Except I'm 
going to move it and i'm going to incorporate my arms so what i'm trying to do is get more rotational movements if you want to just keep it isolated to your wrist that's fine but i said it wrong last time it was the gypsy chicks who are belly dancers that were local so some of this movement is very rotational so ankle circles those of you who are bedridden can still do these different exercises. You'll just have to modify how you want to do it. So some ankle movements. I'm going one way and then the other. I'm kind of going back and forth. I'm really trying to open up those spaces in my foot and my ankle. Again, I'm going to do this at an angle. Plank pose. Those of you who are bedridden, maybe just lying on your forearms. Maybe lifting up, but if you can, let's do plank pose. This is the one real static pose. Hopefully you can see this. This is the one static pose in this um, routine. So try to hold this for a length of time. I'm going to do a little down dog, child pose. Now, let's do the leg lifts. I'm calling them leg lifts animal walk, but this is the part where we can be playful. So again, I'm gonna hold on to a stable surface for a little extra security. I'm gonna coordinate my breathing, weight shift, and then start the leg lifts. And shift, and then lift this one leg up. And flex and extend, flex and extend. Abduction. And then I'm going to throw in, or I'm going to add some rotational movements. And I'm going to play with this. So listen to the music and let the music kind of guide me. Now, if I'm bedridden or uh, like Maybe some, some of you are really hurting from all the shoveling. You may not really feel this much movement today. If you're in bed, just maybe move your legs a little tiny bit. It's okay, be creative. If you wanna let go, it's okay. Just make sure you feel safe. I'm gonna switch around to the other side. Breath, weight shift, flex and extend your leg, throw in the abduction, and then the rotation, throw in the ro add the rotation. So we're getting flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, rotation, Really work in the range of motion. Now, 
take it a step further and just really move. Although I think it's it's really the music is kind of quiet. So I'm gonna keep my movements kind of quiet. Do you want to change it up? So let the music help. And if I throw that in, we'll just do this for a little bit. You can tell one of my knees is I want to get out and dance. So let share my household with you. You know, use this music as a chance to just move your body however it wants to move. If you want. I call this animal walks. I don't feel like you know so much like an animal I want to dance more. But some of your kids, you may feel like you might want to do something like an animal. You want to change it up again? your feet back on the mat. Deep breath in and out. Again, deep breath in and out. This time with your hands at your chest. Namaste. Now, while I'm standing here, I'm going to do three ohms. You can join in, that would be great. One thing I do want to share with that is when I make the ohm sound, instead of projecting it out my throat, I'm going to try to project the energy of the sound into my body. And it's like a figure eight. So it goes down into my belly, comes around crosses at my throat, goes up into my head, crosses around. So it's like a figure eight, if that makes any sense. So we'll do three ohms. Deep breath in and out. Use your breathing with this. Namaste, everybody. Hope you have a good week. Thanks for joining in. Appreciate it.